Finally, opening statements in the Sunny Balwani trial. It's day six of Sunny Balwani's trial, and I'm going to talk to you about what the government said in opening statement, highlighting what they said, and also talk to you about what the defense said in opening statement and why the judge said to the defense counsel to wrap it up. And I'm also going to just remind you of some scheduling that's coming up. So hi there, I'm Michelle Hagan. I'm a legal analyst and a former prosecutor. You may recognize me because I provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes case. So this is my opinion, and you're welcome to leave a comment or question. Do subscribe, hit the like button, and do also smash the bell so you get notified of any of my upcoming videos. Okay, so just in case you popped on this channel, let me give you a little bit of background. So who is Sonny Balwani? Sonny Balwani was the COO of Theranos. And it's a blood testing company that Elizabeth Holmes started. She was the CEO. She also, was also charged with the same 12 felony counts, felony fraud counts that Sonny Balwani is, char is facing. She was convicted of four counts in January of 2022, four counts of fraud, one conspiring to defraud investors, and then three counts of defrauding individual investors. Okay, so Sonny Balwani faces the six counts relating to defrauding investors, the four counts related to defrauding patients, and the two counts conspiracy, one conspiring to defraud investors, and the other one is conspiring to defraud patients. Okay, so uh, scheduling real quick. So it looks like the court has scheduled out uh, 16 more days of trial. So that goes till May 3rd. And, and of course, we could have more days than that. We'll see. Um, and also, we have on March 29th, the defense's motion to dismiss the case, the counts. I don't know. But if that's granted, the ca this case might go away for Balwani. We'll find out. All right. So let me get into it. So what is it? What is the point of opening statement? The point of opening statement, and if you look at my video on day five highlights, I talked about this. And in fact, the judge, when the judge said to the defense attorney to wrap it up, it was right around the time the defense attorney was starting to argue. This is closing. I mean, this is opening statement. See, I just slipped there. This is opening statement, not opening arguments, right? So the judge says the defense attorney to wrap it up. That's Never good to hear a judge tell you to wrap it up. But anyway, again, this is just my opinion. So let's talk about um, the point of opening statement. That's to tell the jury, introduce the jury to what your case is about, right? So in the O.J. Simpson case, it was about racism, contamination, conspiracy. You immediately understood what the defense was arguing, the defense's case was about, right? So what did the prosecution say in opening statement? The prosecution said, this case is about fraud. It's about lying and cheating to obtain property. And that these two were partners in crime. What did the defense say in their opening statement? Well, the defense, you could maybe say it's the blame game is what they were saying, right? So I'll tell you exactly what they said so you can decide. But they also, I mean, the point of opening statement for a defense counsel for the defendant is to plant seeds of doubt, right? Because this is a criminal case. So in a criminal case, the prosecution has to prove each and every element beyond reasonable doubt. So if you're the defense attorney, you want to plant some doubt. This is your first opportunity to talk to the jury. You're giving them the first impression of your case. You want to plant the doubt. So what did the defense do? The defense brought up the missing database, the LIS. I think it's called Laboratory Information Systems, the database for Theranos, which basically collected the patient results and the quality control results. So that would be, in my opinion, the best piece of evidence to show whether or not the technology was accurate and reliable, right? So the defense, back to the blame game that I think is, is basically what the defense is doing here. Not only did they bring up this missing database, and again, we have to see, they opened the door in opening statement. They brought it up, so now we have to find out 
And the government, the prosecutors objected. So we have to find out whether the judge is going to let in the testimony, the evidence around this missing database, which the court, the ju this judge has already made a, um, gave a decision back in the Elizabeth Holmes case, saying that this database, they couldn't get into the fact that there was culpability pointing towards Theranos and uh, their attorneys because when the database was produced to the prosecutors, they weren't given the key code, and I think there was a passcode or, or whatever. It was basically they were given a database that they couldn't get into, right? So the judge didn't allow, in the Holmes case, them to talk about um, the possibility of liability or culpability pointing towards Theranos and their counsel. And I'm, this isn't the counsel that's currently represented by Lonnie, nor is it the counsel that was representing Elizabeth Holmes. But anyway, I don't want to get too detailed. So let's get into the opening statement about what each side said. So um, the prosecution goes first in opening statement because it's their burden of proof, right? So they said this case is about fraud. It's about lying and cheating to obtain property. And they said that Balwani lied to investors and patients about Theranos, Theranos' tech, um, tech capabilities. And they said that Balwani and Holmes made grandiose and spectacular claims about Theranos' tech capabilities, and they convinced Safeway and Walgreens to invest millions. So, and also talked about they had pharmaceutical deals, even though the pharmaceutical companies were telling the executives they didn't want to do business with Theranos. So here you see the prosecution laying out their case, right? And if you go, um, I'll probably do a, a video on the text between uh, Holmes and Balwani regarding what happened with Walgreens, because it was a huge debacle. Okay, so maybe we'll talk about that. All right, so moving on here. Um, the prosecution also said in opening statement that in September 2013, Balwani and Holmes convinced the Wall Street Journal to run an article favoring Theranos that misled investors and timed the release of that press statement that falsely claimed that Theranos technology could do any blood test with a few drops of blood. So if you go look at the video I did about whether Elizabeth Holmes played the media, you can look at those texts between Balawani and Holmes and you can make the decision on whether or not you think they timed the uh, press release of the Wall Street Journal article. Okay, so um, the prosecution also said that sometimes Holmes took the lead in duping investors, sometimes Holmes took the lead in duping investors, and sometimes Balwani took over. The evidence will show that Balwani and Miss Holmes were partners in virtually everything. That's the partners in crime, right? And he also, the government, the prosecutor also showed some PowerPoint slides where those representations, those false, allegedly false representations regarding the technology and the testing capability were given to investors. Um, and then they also talked about that Theranos at most could do 12 tests, not all the tests that they claimed that they could do. And they did them badly, but in September 2015, the prosecution said in opening, when Theranos came under scrutiny, they started using the modified devices, those third party devices, even though allegedly they told the investors and the patients that they were using Theranos technology, the Edison machines and the other machines. Okay, and then they also, the government also said that Balwani and Holmes also told investors that Theranos had deals with the US military and with pharmaceutical companies, but that the military project never got off the ground and the devices were never used in the battlefield. So that's one of the claims that the prosecution is, sh is showing that Balwani, in this case, in Balwani's case, that that was a false and fraudulent claim made to investors, okay? Then the prosecutor also said, that Balwani, this Balwani told investors as late as October 2014. Many of those investor accounts relate to around this time period, October 2014, that Theranos would have more than $140 million in revenue. 
Balwani told investors that Theranos would have more than $140 million in revenue by the end of the year, even though it only had $150,000 that year. He represented $140,000 is what the prosecution says, but there was only $150,000. They also say that Balwani said he would have they would have over two billion dollars in revenue in 2015. They claim Balwani told investors that their notes would raise would have revenues of over two billion in 2015. And what had what was the reality? They had less than two million. They also said that Balwani was the primary contact with Walgreens, not Holmes. Balwani was the primary contact with Walgreens. Walgreens uh, rolled out all those Theranos wellness centers where all the patients, people could walk in and get their blood tested at Walgreens. And why did Balwani do this? Why the scheme to defraud investors and patients? According to the government, they say that the scheme brought them fame, fame and made them billionaires made Balwani and Holmes billionaires and gave them fame. Prosecution says at the height, Balwani owned 28 million shares worth about 550 million and Holmes owned owed 250 million shares worth about 4.5 billion. So that's what the prosecution is saying. Why did they do this fraud? Why did they engage in this alleged fraud? For money and for fame. Then they also talked, the prosecution talked about they're going to, who the witnesses are going to be. They're basically going to have the same witnesses. So as far as I know at this point, um, Eliz, um, Erica Chung, rather, uh, Dr. Rosendorf are also going to testify, etc., about the patient tests and the problems with the technology. Let's see. And we're also, uh, the prosecution also said that, you know, Balwani was COO. He was head of the operations. And that Balwani and Holmes together made decisions. They made decisions together. See, that goes to the conspiracy. Two or more people having an agreement to commit a crime, right? Crime being fraud, defrauding investors, defrauding patients, allegedly. And this is what the government basically ended with. You will see how these part, how they were partners in everything, including their crime. You will see how they were partners in everything, including their crime. That goes to the two conspiracy counts. It also shows that Balwani was working with Holmes, and again, she was convicted. This jury's not going to know about, you know, they do know a little bit somewhat during jury selection, but they're supposed to put that aside, right? But you know, Elizabeth Holmes' conviction and the evidence in her case are not going to come into his case. It's it, Their decision is going to be based on the evidence and the testimony. The jury's decision will be based on the evidence and the testimony they hear in Balwani's case. Okay, so now let's get to what did the defense say and what about this database? And, what, and I call it the blame game, okay? Because here's what the defense said. The defense said Sonny Balwani did not start Theranos. He did not control Theranos, and he left in May of 2016 when there was already $100 million of investors' money in, the, in Theranos accounts, and he had walked away. In other words, he didn't start it. She built this company. Holmes built the company. Balwani didn't. He walked into a company where she had already built the technology, and he said, you know, the defense is saying he didn't start Theranos and he didn't control Theranos. See, they're blaming Holmes, right? Blaming somebody else. And maybe that's what the evidence shows. We'll see. Okay. Then they said that Balwani never took a dime, never took a dollar. He walked away from the company. He never made a dime from Theranos. And they also said that um, Balwani learned the science. He learned the science about Theranos business from Elizabeth Holmes and the science scientists. So again, they're saying Balwani learned the science from Holmes and the scientists. In other words, he was relying on them. And if it was false and fraudulent, maybe that's what they're going to say. 
who's false and fraudulent, that's not his fault, right? He's the victim here. Is that what they're saying? Maybe that's what they're saying. Then they also did um, personalize Balwani because you always want to personalize your client, right? So they said that Balwani's three brothers were in the courtroom and, his, and he also has two sisters. He was born in South Asia and his parents were farmers and that they owned factories and farms. He grew up in a family business, in a family of business people, but his parents didn't go to college. He also received his undergraduate degree in information systems on a student visa at Texas Tech, and then he moved to Silicon Valley where he worked as an engineer in startups. He eventually worked in my, at Microsoft in 1994, he, in, and in 1994, he left and started a company that he sold and became a U.S. citizen. They didn't mention the fact that he sold it for a lot of money, millions, the company. Okay, so I know this jumps around a little bit, but I'm just doing it in order of how it was presented to the jury. So, he says that Balwani met Holmes when he was getting his MBA at UC Berkeley. He was getting his MBA at UC Berkeley, and he was doing a language program in China. That's where he met Elizabeth Holmes. After he graduated from Berkeley with his MBA, he started working on an engineering degree at Stanford. And he started dating Holmes in 20, 2004. So I think she was 19. I think he was 35 at the time. So um, again, the defense pointed out that Holmes built Theranos, not Balwani. Elizabeth, not Sonny, built, built a small but sophisticated diagnostic company. Yeah, it was sophisticated, all right. Diagnostic company before Sonny joined in 2009. Again, the defense is saying he basically walked into the door, walked in the door. The company was already set up, right? He didn't have anything to do with any of that technology, setting it up or setting the business up. That was all Elizabeth Holmes. I, I imagine that's what they're saying here. What do you think they're saying? Then they said that Balwani joined Theranos in 2009, not because Holmes was his girlfriend, but because he believed in the company. He believed in the company's technology. Balwani loaned Theranos, loaned Theranos up to $18 million, $18 million in 2009 when Theranos was struggling to pay bills and Theranos eventually paid him back. So he got his $18 million back. What's interesting to me is he invested because he believed in the technology. Here's a here's a, a, a guy who went to Berkeley, got his MBA. He's getting his engineering at Stanford. He yeah, he got his MBA at Berkeley and he invests in a company because he believes and he invested the time that it was struggling. Okay, this is just my opinion. He invested the time it was struggling. My question is why was it struggling? Was it because the technology wasn't working? Is that is that what could it have been? I don't know. We'll see. So um, the defense also said that Balwani never sold a single share. It's exactly what Holmes said. Never sold a single share of Theranos stock, and he only took a $99,000 annual salary. He was only paid $99,000. Really? Well, what about the lifestyle? And yeah, I don't know if I buy that. Okay. Again, just my opinion. Um, then we get to Here's what the defense says. Everything that Balwani knew, Theranos technology, all the technology he, he learned, that he knew about Theranos technology, he learned from Theranos scientists. And Theranos scientist Ian Gibbons. It's interesting. Theranos scientists, even Ian Gibbons, told him in February 2010 that the technology could do, quote, all four categories of blood testing. So Balwani's going to say that Ian Gibbons told him that basically the technology was working. Um, if you know, remember about Ian Gibbons, tragically, he committed suicide. So um, it's tragedy, big tragedy. So here we, again, we see the defense saying, you know, Ian Gibbons told him. Elizabeth Holmes set up the company. He relied on what the scientists told him. She built it. He just basically walked in the door and what invested $18 million into it. Okay. Then they also pointed out that there are no scientists developed 76 patents, 
more than 200 small sample blood tests and validated 70 tests. I, I guess they're just showing that, you know, they were doing the technology that according to Balwani, it was working because they got these patents. I don't know. Maybe that's what they're trying to imply here. And then they said that uh, Balwani's counsel says there's no dispute that there no used commercially modified machines. Remember, that was a big part of it. They didn't tell the investors that, which is one of the allegations of fraud. But they're not going to dispute that. But they're going to say that Balwani never hid the fact from investors because that was disclosed on the Theranos website. Well, what about the materials, the PowerPoint presentations that were given to the potential investors um, where those representations were made? What about the Wall Street Journal article that was written by Roger Parloff where those claims were made that the technology was accurate, reliable, and cheap? and all those PowerPoint presentations. And here's what Balwani says regarding Walgreens, right? They say, you know, the government says that he was the lead person with Walgreens. Well, here's what the defense says about Walgreens. He, he, Balwani says that Walgreens told him again and again that it planned to roll out the Theranos devices in 2000 stores nationwide and that he had shared this information with investors. So according to Balwani, he believed what Walgreens was telling him that they were rolling out the stores, although the text, which you may, not, you may not have seen yet, but I've seen it, and I probably should do this video. In the text between Elizabeth Holmes and Balwani, they're talking about the major screw-up with Walgreens, right? When they didn't disclose that they were using Venus draws, not finger stick, but they didn't tell Walgreens in the whole debacle that happened. But what the defense is saying in opening statement is that Balwani was just making the rep, just passing on what Walgreens told him. Yeah, I I don't know about that. And then the other thing about Balwani is he was the one that was hiring, along with Holmes, hiring these lab directors, one of which was his dermatologist. So what's their reason for that? The defense said that he wanted to replace one of the doctors, but because of state approval delays, he was forced to get temporary lab directors, again, blaming somebody else, right? Then we have, I'm at the last page here. Sorry, this is going a little long. At least you, you know, um, you're getting the highlights here, not all of it. So, um, and then Balwani says that um, the former lab director, Dr. Adam Rosendorf, quit and Rosendorf went to reporters instead of going to federal inspectors. And I think what that means is that if Rosendorf, being the lab director at Theranos, if he was so concerned about the technology, why did he go to reporters? He should have gone to federal in inspectors, right? Excuse me. So that's kind of an interesting point. And then they brought up at the very end about the missing database. And they said that the prosecution, so now they're blaming the prosecutors, dragged their heels and didn't get a key to unlock the database until years after when it was too late. And the database showed that the tests were accurate. See, their claim is, I think the defense is going to try to prove if they can use this database um, testimony or database, they're not going to be able to use the database itself because it's been, they don't have the key to get into it. So it's not usable evidence, but they can certainly have testimony around it if the judge lets this in, that they're going to say that had they had the database, the results been inspected, they would have seen that it was accurate and reliable results. Therefore, there was never any fraud, right? Because if they have a database to back that up, but the problem is they don't have the database. So I guess the defense is going to say it's the government's fault. And that evidence could have exculpated, meaning it could have shown that Balwani was not, didn't have the knowledge that these tests were not, or the technology was not fair and accurate, that he, he believed the test, testing and the technology was fair and accurate. And here's a database to back that up. But because they don't have that evidence, it's not his fault. It's the government's fault. Is that what they're implying here? I don't know. It was interesting. But here's the problem. The judge has to decide what to do here because the defense opened the door. 
they were allowed to in uh, pre-trial motions, they were allowed to talk about the database, but if they were going to get into what happened to it, um, then they were going to have to bring up the fact that, you know, it looks like Theranos was involved and their counsel was involved in the handling of this database. So there may be a problem there. There may be some culpability, culpability pointing towards uh, Holmes or Theranos or whoever these other third parties are, but not at their client Balwani, right? So maybe, maybe the fact that that missing database, maybe the missing evidence is enough reasonable doubt in the minds of one juror or more jurors, you know, to acquit Balwani or to find him not guilty on some counts, guilty on others. I don't know. We're going to find out. But that was just opening statement. So do you think the defense planted a seed of doubt? Do you think, I, I call it the blame game. You know, maybe the evidence supports all of this. I'm a little shaded because I watched the, you know, the first trial. So, and a lot of this evidence and the witnesses are going to be the same. So we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. Um, what happens with Balwani's case. So you let me know. Do you think they planted seeds of doubt? Do, what do you think about the opening statements by either side? You know, is this a case about fraud of lying and cheating to, you know, get other people's property, partners in crime? Or is this about a missing database and that other people, you know, it's other people were at fault here, not Balwani. You know, the guy that went to Berkeley and got an MBA, he basically walked in and, you know, the, this, the, he was told what the science is and, he doesn't have a science degree and he was just doing what he was told, you know, doing the best job he could as a COO. I don't know. Is that what they're arguing or claiming? Anyway, just my opinion. So thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe, leave a comment, leave a question. Tell me what you think. Hit the bell, not, uh, he'll hit the bell notification and do subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.